So friends, welcome back to another live session. What we're going to talk about today is a bombshell new paper that uncovers new mechanistic links linking poor metabolic health and excess visceral adipose tissue. And I will define what that is and why we should all care. We should be mandating things like fitness. We should be mandating exercise, real food, blood sugar balance, because this bombshell new paper underscores a new mechanistic link between belly fat, poor metabolic health, and poor outcomes with this virus that is now endemic, meaning it is not going away. This paper, friends, from scientists in Italy should be front page news. This should be all over the New York Times, which, by the way, I looked before posting this. No major network or news outlet covered this paper, and I want to thank a podcast listener. I'll keep his name anonymous, but he sent me this paper yesterday. So this is just fascinating. Let me read to you the title. Now, the punchline here, if you're re-watching this or if you're here live, thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for being here, David. Thank you for being here, Alex. We have so many people here live with us now, which is just fantastic. The punchline is this. When individuals have excessive belly fat or visceral adipose tissue because they are insulin resistant, because they don't exercise, because they have poor sleep, circadian rhythm balances, and so forth, what happens is when those fat cells enlarge because they get overfilled, they get infiltrated with immune cells and there's necrosis or death within the adipocytes. Those dead fat cells spill over lipids and those lipids can cause an embolism, and which is essentially like an occlusion or stenosis of, of a vessel and artery. And that can cause respiratory distress, that can cause hypoxia, that can cause all of the symptoms that you are seeing present with people with severe COVID-19. In fact, here's the paper right here. Let me just share with you this paper as we're diving into this. Um, this paper right here, fat embolism, uh, uh, fat embolism syndrome mimics severe COVID-19. So this was a case study. Now, a fatty fat fatty embolism syndrome is normally found in individuals who have say uh, they're in a major ca catastrophic car accident and they break multiple bones and and that the bone breakage and the trauma causes a, a release of fat and that fat then causes feelings of confusion. They get respiratory distress, their oxygen saturation drops, they have all the same symptoms that are actually present with severe COVID-19. Now, so this was an individual who had uh, this fatty embolism syndrome, and the doctors thought it was COVID, but it was actually after an orthopedic procedure. So this is not necessarily new, but this new mechanistic study here, again, that we're going to talk about today, uh, visceral fat, I have to... <laughs> I have to scoot forward to look at this uh, title because I'm on a different setup here. Visceral fat inflammation and fat embolism are associated with long, or I'm sorry, lungs, lipid, uh, higher line uh, membranes in COVID-19 patients. I'm gonna dive into the details, but it's important that you understand uh, the backstory. So this is one of the first papers from this group. And this group has actually been studying this very topic for a long time. Uh, so they're a group out in Italy. They noted this observation spring of 2020. Spring of 2020. Again, no one is covering this. This is very important. So what I'm going to do, friends, is we're going to dive into the details of this. We're going to dive into some images. We're going to talk about leptin over fatness. Now, it's important because when I when I highlight these conversations, some people sort of accuse you of being a fat shamer, and I want to make it very clear. The, the bad fat that is deleterious and maladaptive and is linked with a whole litany of health challenges is specifically the visceral adipose tissue. This is the fat around the abdomen, okay? Now, we need to remember that about 25 to 30% of quote-unquote skinny people have excessive amount of visceral fat. So when we're talking, we're not just talking about the visibly overweight or the visibly obese. We are talking about about 30% of also quote unquote, lean or skinny people. So there's a, about a third, okay, uh, of you who, who look skinny and so forth, but are metabolically fat because you have visceral fat, you are in the same category. So we're not picking on overweight people. And there are people who are overweight, but don't have visceral fat. They have fat on the subcutaneous regions because they are physically fit. They exercise. So you can be overweight and physically fit and not have these challenges. I just want to make that very clear before we dive into it. Okay, so one of the things that's important to understand here is a connection with leptin. We've talked a lot about how leptin is a pleiotropic adipocytokine. That's a big way of talking about how leptin is released from your fat tissue and it also affects the immune system. What well, turns out in that immune system sort of integration, leptin can recruit other pro-inflammatory immune cells to congregate in and around your visceral adipose tissue, which can create that inflammation and this necrosis or death within the fat cells 
And again, this causes this fatty acid uh, embolism or this narrowing of the arteries and poor oxygenation. And again, this new molecular understanding linking visceral adiposity and belly fat with poor outcomes, okay? So this is not new. Here is the data. And I want you to, to pay attention specifically to write down here on the adipocyte on the right of your screen, you see fatty fat embolism syndrome or FES. This is what we're talking about. So if you have excessive amounts of visceral fat, if you're skinny fat or you're visibly overweight and you have excessive amount of fat, what can happen is these cells die. See, we see necrotic death. This is literally happening in fat tissue. Fat tissue can die. This is insane, right? To think about that you're alive and you're living and you're walking and you're moving and people are out there going to Chick-fil-A and Jack in the Box and they don't even know it, but their fat cells have actually died. They've undergone this process of necrosis. And so this necrotic fat cell starts to release the stored lipid droplets contained within the fat cell. And that can then cause damage throughout the body. So that's what we're talking about. We are going to get into some of the details. So now that you understand the backstory, let's dive into it. Uh, is this interesting to you? Do you find this interesting? Let me check in on the chat here. Uh, okay, we, we have some folks that are here. Uh, we have Nelson, we, we have Marie, we have Ivor, we have uh, we have Alex. Okay, this all ends when we say no. Yeah, I, I'm with you, friends. So let's get into this. So here is the synopsis. Debris from overfilled fat cells have been shown to circulate throughout the body, causing respiratory distress that ultimately claims uh, lives in people uh, living uh, unhealthy lives and, and not exercising and have diet-induced lifestyle diseases that are infected with COVID-19. Okay, so in brief, what these scientists actually did was an ultrasound analysis of visceral adipose tissue samples belonging to COVID-19 subjects who had died. And what they found is there was widespread presence of free lipid droplets that are derived from dead fat cells. And so these free lipid droplets are going around the body and causing havoc, okay? So this could be part of the problem. And they, they couldn't totally figure out through the, the parameters of the study what the chicken or the egg was. Was it the systemic inflammation for, as a result of the infection or was it the infection itself actually causing the, the fat cells to die? But this is all, uh, these futures are, are characteristic of an underlying fat embolism syndrome. So their study revealed the presence of typical signs of cellular stress together with clear futures of lipid spillover from suffering adipocytes, suffering adipocytes. So this is important to recognize that your fat cells can be unhappy. If they get overfilled, if they get inflamed, they become unhappy. So again, this is why exercise is so important. This is why intermittent fasting is so important. This is why eating less processed food is, is important. So lipids, uh, in, were in fact detected in the extracellular space, uh, in the endothelial cells, which are the cells of your cardiovascular system, inside the capillary lumen, and they're ex extruding uh, you know, from inside the fat to all over uh, in the body. So this should be front page news. Uh, really, really important stuff. So just background and perspective, you all know this, but uh, severity of disease when it comes to individuals, especially under the age of 60, uh, the obesity rates are almost double the risk of being admitted to the ICU. So if you're obese and you're under the age of 60, your risk of, of going to the ICU is double compared to some individual who is similar aged as you but is not obese. And we also know the severity of COVID-19 is strictly associated with the presence of comorbidities. Uh, while obesity alone is responsible for about 20% of COVID hospitalizations, obesity in combination with diabetes and high blood pressure is responsible for 60% of hospitalizations. This is right from peer-reviewed academic literature, friends, but you don't hear about that. We're not talking about exercise or eating real food or anything. Okay, so let's continue on here uh, and, and get into this. Okay. Okay, uh, Sinti, this is the author's name. He's, he's the head author here. We have found clear evidence that fat embolism in individuals who have died from COVID-19, uh, uh, suggesting that what this might be a relevant pathological event with severe consequences and something that in terms of drug development should be looked at. Of note, lipid light structures were also found in the lumen of the visceral adipose tissue and the venous uh, vesicles and so forth. All right, so the results of the study, let's dive into this because this is important. There's going to be some jargon, but we're going to simplify this because it has to do, again, with insulin resistance, fat cells on fire, liver infiltration of fat, so fatty liver, so that's important, and then the lungs. So although there were no between-group between differences in body mass index and adipocytes, higher prevalences of macrophages 
in the fat cells were found in COVID-19 individuals who were deceased compared to similar individuals who were deceased but didn't have COVID-19. Okay, being that visceral adipose tissue inflammation is associated with lipid spillover from dead fat cells. That's crazy, right? Uh, we studied lipid uh, we studied lipid distribution employing this technique called ORO. Uh, lipids were, were observed within the lungs and livers uh, of these individuals and also the endothelial cells, which are the vessels, uh, and also in uh, the liver and so forth. Okay, notably, signs of fat embolism were more prevalent among obese individuals independent of COVID-19 diagnosis. So remember, carrying a lot of excessive body weight in the form of fat can cause your fat cells to start to misbehave and they start to spill over lipids and those lipid spillovers cause damage in the vessels, in the respiratory system, in the liver, okay? Uh, importantly, all infected individuals' lungs presented with lipid-enriched uh, membranes, these highline membranes uh, that are associated with COVID-19-related pneumonia. And this was present in only one control. So again, we're trying to understand the mechanistic connections here between disease severity and obesity. And it turns out that it could be this lipid spillover from dead fat cells is causing the lungs to, to be problematic. Now, you might say, well, why is this important? Well, previous studies have actually shown that the lungs is not only a target due to severe disease, but it's also the site in which infection spreads to the blood vessels, to the heart, to the gut, to the brain, and so forth. So if the lungs are compromised from lipid spillover from dead fat cells, friends, that's a problem. That is it not something that we should address? This is we talk about root cause resolution in, in sort of integrative functional medicine, we should be looking at why the lungs are compromised in the first place. And it could be from lipid spillover from excessive belly fat. And so this is where exercise comes in. This is where fasting comes in. This is where eating a low carb diet and all of that. Now, these authors go on to say published data from published data support interstitial fibrosis with alveolar hyaline membrane formation. And again, so this is the complex sort of histological characteristics of individuals who have bilateral pneumonia. And this is the same futures that were found in the deceased individuals. And again, they, they did some this lipid uh, tracing technique and found that the fat that is causing this you know, alveolar uh, cell, within the, which is the functional unit of your lungs, to be compromised was compromised due to what? Guess what? Fat spillover. So really important stuff here. Okay, now... The question that we're going to get into in just a moment here is, does the virus actually infect the fat cells themselves? And I want to get to some of your questions very soon here. Uh, but first, what I do just want to mention, you know, we're talking about metabolic health. And metabolic health is so important, friends. There's so many tools at your disposal to support metabolic health, like fasted exercise, like eating less packaged processed foods, like eating more lean. Uh, well, I mean, it depends on your, your macros, but, you know, healthy, clean protein, uh, fatty meat uh, is another source, to, again, depending upon if you're low carb or what your carb co content can be. But a natural product that can help support metabolic health is berberine hydrochloride. This can be very effective, especially when you dose it, either kickstarting a fast or in the evening to start your fast. When you stop your feeding window, you can take berberine hydrochloride to, to kickstart your fast. You can do one to two capsules in the evening. This can help support metabolic health. You can go over to our sister company, Myoscience, and support your metabolic health by checking out the berberine uh, products and bundles that are featured there. You can use the coupon code podcast at checkout. So berberine is very effective. There's a lot of reviews that you can read from other people just like you. So uh, you might want to consider that. Again, that's Myoscience with an X.com. Uh, so we're going to continue on here and I would like to get to some of your live questions. Okay. I just want to read like two more paragraphs and we're going to get into this. So uh, lastly, they say that since the uh, material release from the abdominal visceral tissue uh, passes through the liver to reach the lung, they wanted to figure out if the liver was compromised from these dead fat cells releasing lipids and all this sort of stuff. So uh, they use this ORO technique to stain the liver cells. And they actually found that liver samples belong to COVID-19 patients and, and also controls. They found that they show this sort of steatosis or this buildup of fat in the microvessels within the liver. And uh, again, so these then travel to the lungs. So it's not really, again, f you know, figured out, you know, do, do, does the virus infect the fat cells or is the inflammation as a result of a, a suboptimal immune system response causing the fat cells to then exacerbate their death, causing all these cytokines to then 
cause them to die and then the fat's going everywhere. It's not really known what the chicken or the egg is, but it's really interesting. So uh, again, we're going to get to your questions in just a moment. In summary, eight of nine COVID-19 patients with documented lung fat embolism display signs of hepatic fat embolism as well. So liver fat, okay? We know that a lot of people are metabolically unhealthy. I've shared with you my blood work cheat sheet. You should be looking at your liver enzymes, AST, ALT, GGT. You got to look at your liver enzymes, friends, your triglycerides. These are commonly elevated. We got to check that out and use natural solutions to improve the health of our liver, right? We see people still drinking soda and we were promoting free donuts, but we should be promoting metabolic health, okay? Uh, so very interesting stuff here. Uh, I think this is super fascinating. So I'll, what I will do is leave this paper up and we will get to some of your live questions. Um, someone just said here, so uh, Hoda Prime says there was a Burger King commercial when you joined. Oh man, that is that is no, no good. Um, okay, Brian Kenny, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. That really helps a lot. Roxanne says, dang, um, dang it, see it when... I'm in that category, but at least I'm working on it. Yeah. So Roxanne says, you know, she's she might be overweight or or, or skinny fat. I'm not I'm not really sure what she means by that category because we talked about two categories of people who have belly fat, but she's working on it. So that is the key, friends. Here is using this information to improve our lifestyle and our nutrition habits. We're not trying to victim blame here. We're not trying to shame people. We're trying to get people to think differently about how they can improve their metabolic health. Uh, and so I'm glad that you are working on it, Roxanne. That is amazing. Okay, uh, uh, Shawnee says, uh, going to bed now, which is fine. Andre says, ban smoking, sugar, and fast food. Yeah, uh, you got my vote on that. Okay, um, Sun Wolf Spirit is driving home and uh, seems super interested. Okay, Steve says the UK is fat and that's why our COVID deaths was so high. Uh, minister claims recent comment from the UK science minister. October of 21. Yes. And uh, he went on to say, or she went on to say that they received a lot of criticism for that, uh, which is unfortunate that, that people are getting criticized for just pointing out the obvious thing. It's like saying this, this the sky's blue, right? Uh, if there's a high prevalence of obesity and poor metabolic health, look at the country, uh, one of the countries in the world that has the highest death rate higher than the U.S. Uh, is Mexico. We know obesity is a major problem in Mexico um, as well. Okay, uh, what else we have? Uh, John, John says, three funerals all had underlying health factors. Yeah, uh, we don't hear much about addressing these underlying health factors, do we? Uh, no, it is really unfortunate. Um, carnivore nurse says, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, not only our ICU patients are overweight, but the skinny all have diabetes. Yes. So the, there's, that's the connection bet between skinny fat, uh, is, you know, you're skinny, you have poor muscle tone, but you have visceral adipose tissue, you have fat around the organs and you can still have this propensity to have, uh, dead fat cells and, and, and all that. Okay. Brian says, if lipids are shedding, they're perfect, uh, but for a virus. I'm not sure I under totally understood that comment. Okay, great question here from Distributor Dust. How do we tell if we have visceral fat in and around our organs? A DEXA scan. So you can do a full body diffusion weight MRI, or you can do a DEXA scan. The DEXA will tell you uh, if there is, if you're concentrating, you know, basically where your fat is being distributed and stored. So that's a great question. Um, okay. Uh, Felling says NAC. Yeah. Uh, N acetylcysteine. Would that be helpful in this particular case? Probably not necessarily. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the question is referring to. Are you referring to myosciences status on the NAC? Uh, NAC, a lot of people have been panic purchasing N acetylcysteine. As such, there's a global shortage of that. Raw materials and manufacturers are just completely backed up. So if you've ordered NAC from any company in, in the United States or Canada, um, mostly in the US, you're going to have to wait for it because people have been panic buying this, stockpiling this, ordering 10, 12, 15, 20 at a time, and there's no NAC anywhere. Uh, there might be some, people might still have some, but it's gonna be out of stock very soon. And so you, when you order NAC, expect to wait six to eight weeks. That's just the reality of the situation, and I, I apologize for that. That's just kind of how things work right now. Um, 
John says, it's the first time seeing this channel live. Thank you for being here, John. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, uh, the media only tries to avoid... The media always tries to avoid obesity as a factor for COVID-19 patients. Yes. Um, I'm not sure why we're, it's taboo to address um, the underlying health condition topic, but we definitely have to, to, to address that, right? Um, Alex says, does reduced carb intake help with the lipids in the process of lipids? Yeah, so when you reduce your carbohydrate intake, especially from ultra-processed foods and carbohydrates, essentially what you're doing is improving your body's ability uh, uh, to to improve your your uh, blood sugar homeostasis and balance there, and in so doing, by making uh, your body more insulin sensitive, what you can do then is help to oxidize and burn fats more efficiently. So, if you think about, you know, when fat oxidation slows, it's really in the post meal window, in the presence of insulin. It's it's really hard for your mitochondria to oxidize fat for f for fuel. You know, uh, in the presence of insulin. Ben Bickman has talked a lot about this. He's been on the podcast multiple times to share information along these lines. So it's important to understand that if we want to improve uh, our body's ability and fat cell health, we need to exercise, eat carbohydrates that are commensurate with our physical activity level. So if you're not exercising very much and you're eating a bunch of, bunch of rice or a bunch of pasta, well, you can expect potentially those carbohydrates to be converted into fat and overfill your fat cells, right? So... It's not that carbs are always bad, it's that the most people are eating too many carbohydrates in relationship to their physical activity level, okay? So that's where that's where things are at. WW says, uh, can you please ever do easily smoothies and healthy snacks? Yeah, okay, so what can we do about smoothies and healthy snacks? You know, good for kids, obviously. Um, I'm not a fan of people snacking all of the time. But yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we will thank you for that suggestion. We'll have to work on it. Swamp Hawk says uh, they built a large uh, Faraday cage over their country to keep them uh, off our Western internet out. Um, who is that? Who are you talking about, Western Hawk? Okay, Uber driver, not careful. Um, have had 10,000 people in my car, including COVID patients. Haven't been sick nor have antibodies. I'm very healthy and eat almost no sugar. David, man, this should be front page news. Uh, I know a lot of healthcare practitioners that have worked with thousands at this point of patients, uh, and they never got it either, <laughs> which is crazy. Okay. Andre says, if everyone is healthy and they don't depend on the government uh, and the healthcare systems, yeah, that's a, that's a problem for certain people. Okay. Alex says, uh, can you drop in blood sugar weaken the immune system? Can a drop in blood sugar weaken? Um, it's more the rise in blood sugar that, that weakens the immune system, not the drop. I'm sure there are some collateral damage of drops in blood sugar, but it's the a rise, super physiologic rise in blood sugar that's problematic. Stephanie Mo Davis says, uh, what are your feelings on helping individuals to address fear, worry, and anxiety, and how uh, we can be more effectively take control back of their mental state along with diet shifts? Stephanie, I think, you know, fear and anxiety come are created by lack of meaning, purpose, and social connection. So if people, and obviously, uh, you know, poor food choices and not exercising enough and sleep and all that. So we need to address the mindset. Um, so I think that is really, really important. So having meaning, having purpose, having strong social connections, family, friends, a lot of people don't, it sounds nuts to some people, but a lot of people don't even have someone they can call in an emergency. Like they don't even have a friend they can talk to. Most people don't have real friends. And that is friend, that is a real problem uh, when it comes to anxiety, depression, poor mental health, and the whole thing. So uh, really important uh, stuff. Okay. Uh, John says, working at a COVID test site and uh, VAC center. Uh, John, have you gotten it yet? Okay. Uh, Jeffrey says, calm down, Mike. Was I feel like I'm very calm right now. Um, okay, what else? Um, okay, here's a great comment here from Miss Carruthers. Uh, thank you so much, uh, High Intensity Health. Thank you for listening. Uh, I have lost 30 pounds and three to four inches off my waist, I assume, and I'm reaching a happier, healthy life due to the knowledge you've shared with us. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that's the idea. We've lost a lot of people along the way. Uh, however, um, 
those of you that have that are still with us, which is great that you're you're still consuming uh, our channel's content. Um, it's awesome because you you realize that health matters and you've taken action, which is great. Okay, what do you think about AKG alpha ketoglutarate? I think uh, in terms of longevity, one paper says that uh, it inhibits mTOR and all this. So um, this is a Krebs cycle metabolite. Uh, it's usually uh, to the best of my knowledge, involved in pre-workouts and stuff like that. Um, I I don't know that it's a total game changer. I think it can be helpful helpful for some people for exercise. Um, not really, not really too sure on that. Uh, that it's a game changer for longevity. Okay. Uh, someone says the first five to ten pounds lost on keto is water weight. Yeah, it can be, and glycogen too. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. John T says, uh, I deal with rheumatoid and fibro. Your channel has, uh, leading me towards remission. Wow. That's super cool. Uh, I eat cold showers, uh, was keto now and carnivore. And of course, uh, the big one fasting, uh, any other tips, especially to repair damage. Yeah. With fibromyalgia, um, and, and rheumatoid, well, vitamin D comes to mind with RA and MS, so, so that would be that would be helpful. Uh, circadian rhythm balance, uh, that's super helpful. Um, exercise, you know, you mentioned uh, cold showers, keto, and fasting. I find with a lot of people with autoimmunity just don't exercise enough, so that's super helpful. Just being in nature, you know, just going out and meditation, stress reduction can be super helpful. So that's what I would that's what I would say. Um, Okay, what are your thoughts on working out in the cold? Uh, I live in the Midwest, and the non-heated garage is the only spot available. Yeah, so I would suggest when you're warming your body up, make sure that you stay warm because you can cause an injury um, to do that. So I would I would definitely make sure that you're wearing a... Um, I have to block someone. Stop spreading bro science, you libtard. Um, I don't know if he's directed at me or not. Uh, but anyway... Um, what I would say, again, if you're working out in the cold, make sure you warm up properly. That's the thing that can be a challenge. Um, so that's what I would say. And then once your body's warm, it's going to be fine. Um, but stick after it. Okay. Do you travel and speak? Yeah, we have some stuff coming up, Lisa. So I'll let you know about that. Uh, it sounds like you live in Coeur d'Alene, which is good. So we have some cool stuff coming up for December, January and all that sort of stuff. Um, Maria says, have you lost subscribers due to your opinions on the jab? Well, just to be totally clear, my opinions on the jab are people can do whatever they want. Uh, I don't think the government should be telling people what they can or can't do and if they should be able to work or not based upon their status. Okay, that's my opinions uh, about that. And to be honest, I think it's backed up by, by science. Um, so have I lost people? Yeah, I've lost a lot of people. But what do you do? Uh, that's just how it goes. Um, okay, there was a question here about um, about fish oil. Where did it go? Uh, what do you think about? What do I think about? Um, are fish oils good? Okay, so this is a question that uh, comes from uh, Calicio, I think. Uh, so are fish oils good? Well, it depends on the fish oil quality, the brand, the testing. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into fish oil and you want to make sure you're getting a good product. So that's just one thing that I would consider uh, when it comes to looking at fish oil. But the thing that I would actually suggest for a lot of you is to actually test your omega-3 index. And we're working on partnering with the company Omega Quant to actually offer this through our company. Uh, you know, just because it's a great index, a lot of people think like, Oh yeah, I eat like pasture raised beef and like grass fed, you know, chicken or, or grass fed, you know, well, meat products and you know, pasture pork and chicken. So therefore, I get enough omega threes in my diet. And when they test their omega three index, they lo and behold come to find out, like, wow, my omega three index is actually quite low. The omegas coming from my diet didn't really translate into into uh, a higher omega three index. So so we're working on that, but. Uh, I would suggest testing your omega-3s and then seeing if, in fact, taking an omega-3 supplement would be helpful. Uh, just a small plug over at Myoscience, we offer a third-party tested, optimized, it's a monoglyceride form of the omega-3. Very well absorbed, minimal side effects. You do one capsule and it, it will do the job because it's, much, it's like three times better absorbed. So 
you know, there's all these different fish oils out there, krill oil and all that. I think it's way overrated, but anyhow, um, that's it. We got final star fitness in the house. What's going on? Um, yeah, I like the, I like the mandate fitness shirt. Super, super cool. I get paid nothing to wear this, by the way. I just think that fitness is really important. Okay. Um, what's the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6? Dude, let's not talk about ratios. We talk about ratios, calories. This is unsustainable. Um, no. Omega-6s are everywhere. Omega-3s are almost found nowhere. Okay, let's just put it like that. So you need to uh, make sure that you're being a little bit more intentional about having more omega-3s. So I would say that. Um, okay. Best way to get high fat food on the go. All right. So David, this is a good question. So avocados are a good way to do that. Um, that's what I do. Fatty meat. So get, get the 80, 80, 20 ground, get fattier cuts of meat. Uh, keto brick, go to ketobrick.com, get a keto brick. I do that all the time. So that's a, that's a good way to, to do that. Um, Okay, I'm taking a lot of chia seeds for omega threes. Can't afford to get good fish oil. Okay, so chia seeds, uh, violet femme, uh, not a good source of omega three. Um, so alpha linoleic acid, uh, the conversion rate to DHA and EPA is very low. Uh, plus, chia seeds are not so good for the good old gastrointestinal tract. I've had so many clients over the years, friends, who have had problems with diverticulitis and bowel obstruction with chia seeds. I'm not a big fan of chia seeds. I'm, I'm not anti most plants like some people are, but I'm not a fan of chia seeds. Just saying. Okay. What's the best way to do high fat? Compress your feeding window one to two meals a day. That's the best way because fats take longer to break down and digest. So you, it's part and parcel with the territory. You got to you gotta compress your feeding window. Um, so that is good. I see a, a question here about MCT oil. Is it good or is it bad? It's a nice way to kickstart a fast. Um, it's a nice thing in the morning when people are new to this intermittent fasting thing. Um, it's good for people who have had concussions. It's good for people who are having memory loss. It's good for situations like this. You're doing a live and you just want to optimize. You can take some MCT oil, kick up those ketones. So yeah, there there are there are definitely things you can do um, so with MCT. So um, it's not... It's not a panacea, but it's it's can be helpful in certain contexts, you know. Um, so yeah, well, friends, thank you for being here. What I'm going to do, I just I had to share this study with you. Um, I, I think I'll do just a shorter, like five minute breakdown, so we can look at that all these, um, these 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 images and all these cool things and talk about this. Um, but uh, I do just gotta gotta ask you all that are here. We have a couple hundred, you know, live with us right now. Are you sick of these COVID topics? Are you done with it? Should we should we still talk about it or no? Um, let me know in the chat. Should we? Are you, are you over it? Are we? Is it time to move on or should we still talk about this stuff? Um, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. Okay. Uh. Not too many people. people are coming. Okay, so berberine and fish, berberine and um, uh, green tea. Yeah, berberine and green tea. Totally cool. Um, do you stop supplements before before blood work? Continue what you're doing. Um, continue what with what you're doing. So your blood work is a snapshot in time, and you want to get a realistic idea about uh, what's going on. So so continue with your labs. Continue with your supplements. Um, someone says 50-50, never stop telling the truth. Um, I'm worried more about the you know what. Keep the conversation, but expand into other areas. Keep talking about it. All right, people are saying keep talking. About it. Okay, cool, guys. Well, guys and gals, thank you for that. Um, need, need all the information we can get. Um, I'm not sick of COVID content. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. All right, so 50-50. So we'll do some, but not too much. Um there's a lot that I would love to talk about, but we can't on this platform. Um, anyway, all right. Well, hey, I appreciate you all being here. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing these videos. That's the best thing you can do in addition to the chats like all of you. Um, thank you for, for just being here and all that sort of stuff. So what we're going to do, friends, 
is uh, we will part ways today. Uh, tomorrow we have more content coming this weekend. A really good podcast dropping Sunday. So anyway, friends, uh, have an awesome evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching the replay. Thanks for hitting that like button, and we'll catch you all soon. Bye now.